So when it comes to getting lean and staying lean, habits are king, and most importantly, your eating habits. This is actually the area that most people are struggling with. They might be on track for a week or two, or even a month or so, but then there's that weekend that turns into a whole week, or there's that vacation or something that comes up that really causes a massive setback. And the thing with nutrition is that even a few days off can destroy a whole week worth of effort, and you feel really discouraged, and you just lost a lot of progress. And this is exactly why in this video, I wanna share with you you three healthy eating habits that I personally use that help me get lean and stay lean. So let's dive into it. First, let's talk about temptations because there's going to be plenty. Just the fact that you decided to get lean doesn't mean that the world is going to be on pause and aligning everything to help you get there. I mean, that's just not how this whole thing is going to work out. In fact, you're going to be even more tempted because your food motivation is going to go higher. You're going to find yourself in situations where you will really have an abundance of opportunities to eat whatever. And there's going to be that side of you that will want to do that. Now, you have to learn how to deal with these temptations. And what helps me a lot is developing a habit that I would call negotiating with myself. So for example, I find myself in a place and someone brought a whole pizza. Of course, there's a part of me that wants to eat the whole thing and everything else in the house, but then there's also a part of me that wants to stick to the plan. And I didn't plan for that pizza and now it's kind of that conflict there. In that situation, what I'm really looking to do is exercise my habit of negotiating. So I'm really looking for a fair amount. What's a fair amount of pizza? that will satisfy the fact that, okay, I had some pizza, but also that matches the goal that I have. And that might be one slice, that might be two slices. And this really puts things in the right context because at the end of the day, eating the whole pizza, the level of satisfaction you get from the whole thing actually diminishes as you're coming close to the end of the whole thing. So the first few slices taste the best. And then as you progress through the pizza, even if you had the whole thing, it just wouldn't give you that same level of satisfaction. So here I'm negotiating to find a fair amount. I'm not looking for anything too crazy. I'm not looking to eat pizzas every single day for every meal, I'm not looking to eat a bucket of ice cream every meal. I'm just looking for a fair amount. What is that fair amount? Is that a slice or two slices or three slices? And then when I know what's that fair amount, I then know how to create a plan around that. And I know that I can then incorporate that into my plan and everybody is gonna be happy. When I say everybody, I mean the version of myself that wants to move forward and quote unquote be perfect, and but also the version of myself that wants to just go freestyle and go YOLO. I'm finding a middle ground that will work for me long-term. So this habit of negotiating with yourself is extremely powerful because it also brings massive amounts of awareness and that prevents that mindless eating component which we often are exposed to when we're dieting, especially to a low body fat percentage. Before you know it, you might have just made a mistake and then you have to deal with the mistake. But developing this little bit of a gap there where you can actually negotiate with yourself is massive, massive improvement because it prevents those instinctual reactions and takes a step back to properly analyze the situation, the pros and cons, and you're much more logical, you're much more rational with the whole experience and you're much more consistent. Before we dive into the next habit, please do me a favor, go below this video right now and destroy that like button as hard as possible. It means a lot to me, see your support, helps a ton with the YouTube algorithm. Please go ahead, do that. Second habit that I really wanna share with you here is being adaptable. So important when you're looking at nutrition because for a lot of us, a little slip up, a couple hundred calories here or there can trigger black and white and all or nothing thinking, which then means, oh, let's just scratch the whole day and then let's just scratch the whole weekend. Oh, I may as well just do a little bit extra. And then the whole week is off. That creates a massive setback. And the reality of the situation is that those couple hundred calories extra aren't really that big of a deal because you can easily level it out. If you just ate a little bit less the next few days, you would be totally fine. So that adaptability is so important. The same applies for food choices because a lot of us if you've been in the diet world, you've, you've tried different things and you're following some kind of strict diet and you ate something that is quote unquote bad or in the list of forbidden foods, you feel bad about that. And now that feeling makes you more likely to fall back into irrational emotional thinking, which one of those is black and white thinking. And then it creates a massive setback because you feel super bad about the whole situation. The reality is nobody ever got overweight by eating one pizza. Nobody ever got shredded by eating one salad. It's not about any single instance. It's about what's happening consistently. How are your eating habits? How's your diet the majority 
of the time. Are you dialed in? It's about consistency over perfection. And that's what adaptability teaches you. That's why I'm saying being adaptable is critical, having that mental flexibility in those situations to make the most out of it. It's okay to have different numbers from day to day. Now, they don't, shouldn't be these huge numbers where you're overeating, undereating, overeating, undereating, because that's I mean, the definition of an eating disorder. You could end up in trouble like that. But having a little bit of differences there, it's totally fine because even the nutrition label is a little bit off, right? Even if you're trying to perfectly track everything, it's still gonna be off because our estimates are off. Everything is a little bit off and people are still getting lean. People are still getting shredded with the system being as imperfect as it is. So really embrace the fact that you don't have to control everything. It's okay if you have a little bit of a difference here or there. Consistency at the end of the day is really what matters the most. Now the third eating habit that was a really game changer for me personally as I was getting lean over the years and staying lean for a very long time was being able to recognize real hunger. A lot of people getting to a low body fat percentage often confuse cravings and basic impulses and habits such as snacking with hunger. Because the issue here is that if you're wasting a lot of calories on cravings and those little impulsive habits to snack throughout the day, you're going to be in trouble because you're going to miss those calories now for those regular meals that are supposed to keep you full and that are supposed to make the diet sustainable. And with cravings, they tend to be food specific. They tend to be related to chocolate or some other food that you really want and usually processed foods. And they tend to come on really strong and they tend to also go away if you just simply ignore them. With hunger, it gradually builds up. It's a slow process and typically with hunger, you know what will make you feel full. Maybe it could be some nice boiled potato meal with some little spices here or there, some high protein stuff combined to get a really filling meal with lots of salad. Now with cravings or snacking, it's not really what you're looking for. You're looking for some kind of stimulation. And you also wanna be looking for, is there an emotion tied to this? Is it loneliness, stress, boredom? If that's the case, it's most likely a craving. It's most likely something that you've tied that desire to change your state with eating. Again, these are the instances where you don't want to waste your calories. So by recognizing what's real hunger and being able to classify these impulses to eat, you're gonna be really well ahead because you're gonna know how to manage yourself because there's a limited resources, a limited budget of calories that you're allowed to eat when you're getting lean and you have to be very careful where you spend those. And this habit actually serves you really well later on if, for example, you wanna move away from tracking your nutrition, so let's say you wanna use MyFitnessPal, you wanna do all that stuff now, and that's all great, but if you wanna move away from tracking, understanding hunger is so important for that, to move away from tracking to more intuitive-based eating. So developing this habit and developing this little intuition internally is really critical for your success long-term and to be able to really move to a more sustainable approach at the end of the day, you don't wanna be tracking for the rest of your life, you wanna make sure you have that system developed. So these are the habits that I use. Also, you want to make sure to subscribe below because I'm going to be sharing a lot more of these. Hit the bell icon as well for notifications for my next video. If you're interested in coaching, working with me directly, link is going to be in the description below and I will see you in my next video.